It's Paul Duvall with Stelligent. Uh, in this screencast, I'll be going over post two of two on AWS Code Build. Uh, in the first post on the APN blog, we uh, went over um, the concepts and constructs and, and a how to on using AWS Code Build, which was announced at uh, AWS reInvent. And, and so AWS Code Build is a completely managed service uh, for building uh, your software, uh, running unit tests, and so on. Um, and it supports multiple languages. And so, again, in this one, I'll be going over um, the complete automation of not just uh, AWS Code Build, but also uh, AWS um, Code Deploy, Code Commit, um, and Code Pipeline. And so it's going to run through a complete pipeline from committing your code into your Git repository and then actually deploying it out to production if you choose to do so. Um, and so uh, in the first post, we went over the, the manual uh, setup of using uh, code build. And so I'll just briefly go over that just so you have a, a good idea of how it works using the code build console. And so I'll give it a name and I'll choose uh, AWS code commit as my uh, repository. And I will choose a specific repository. Uh, I'm going to have it managed by uh, code build and then I'm going to because it is a Java sample application. And the sample application is based off of um, the, uh, one of the AWS's um, sample applications for, for Java. And so then I have a specific version, then I use a build spec file. And so we talked about this um, in our introduction to AWS code build, is that you can run the commands, I could insert build commands um, right from the console, uh, but I can also use something known as a build spec file. And this is the build spec file that it's running. And there's lots of ways that you can use this. And this is a pretty simple example, but really gives you a, the idea uh, or should give you an idea around this. So you have the different phases and what's going to happen in those phases. And so in this case, during the build phase, we're going to run an MVM package. And then we have some files that we're um, essentially zipping up and then deploying um, as a part of the, uh, the build process. I'm going to have no artifacts here. Uh, and then it's going to create a service role. So hit continue and I'm going to save. I'm going to choose a branch and then I'm just going to click start build. And so it's going to run through the multiple build phases that we describe um, in our first post. You can see it's submitted, provisioning, downloads the source, installs, you know, all the kind of steps that you might uh, perform as a part of a build process. So in again, in this screencast, I'm going to go over uh, the automation of code build and all the other code services in CloudFormation. And so if you take a look at the post, this is my the initial draft of the of the post, um, you can see that we describe um, how it gets used. Um, and, but the key thing that I'll be going over here are the three key deployment steps. And so the first step is preparing your AWS account. And so there's only two prerequisites um, for launching this solution. One is you have to have an AWS account. So if you haven't signed up for one, here are the instructions for doing that. And the second thing is you need to have a key pair. Um, and so the instructions for the uh, key pair are described right here. Um, and so you could uh, go down to key pairs and you create a, a new key pair. Um, since I already have one created, I won't need to do that. And so the way to launch this stack is by simply clicking the Launch Stack button. And it's going to open up the CloudFormation console, and it's going to use a file uh, that's stored in um, AWS S3, the simple storage service. And I have a name um, that we included in the example, but you can call it whatever you want. Just select a uh, key pair that already exists. Uh, and then I'm going to just enter my email address, hit next. I'm going to, in the advanced, I'm just going to not roll back on failure so I can see what happened if anything does fail. And then I'll click uh, create. And, and then shortly, you're going to see that it's going to um, launch a um, code build pipeline stack. And it's going to start provisioning those resources. And one of the uh, things that it does is um, it um, uses a stack that's based off or uses a template, CloudFormation template based off of uh, AWS uh, for code deploy in which it um, 
launches an EC2 instance and then installs the code deploy agent on it so it can deploy the software. So you'll see that a bit later. So while it's going through that, let's take a look at the CloudFormation template itself. Uh, and this is just a brief overview, but you see some of the parameters that we just um, entered when we launched the stack. Um, and then we have the resources. And so we have some you know, code build, code deploy, uh, code pipeline, uh, IAM roles, and we're giving permissions uh, for the various resources um, in our stack. And then we get down to the code build project uh, resource. And we can see that uh, it uh, depends on a role, and we're giving it, um, the code build project a unique name. We're just using the, the AWS stack name. That way we don't require any user input, but you can alter that if you want. Uh, uses the code build service role, um, and then it defines the environment. We're using a Linux container. We're using you know, a small a compute type uh, along with the uh, Java uh, 8 image. And then we have a source location. The source location um, is uh, dynamically generated uh, from, a, um, from a code commit repo that we, that we actually create in the CloudFormation template. So we're referring to that here, and we're indicating it's a code commit type. It time, uh, times out in 10 minutes, uh, and we add some specific tags. Here we're creating an SS, uh, SNS topic, which is used by, used by code commit. Uh, and then we launch the code deploy EC2 instances stack, um, which we're just going to install or we're going to launch an EC2 instance, um, and then it installs the uh, code deploy agent on it. Here we're creating the code commit repository um, that the pipeline is going to use. Uh, we're using the SNS topic that we already created. And then we're creating basically um, some empty, an empty application, empty deployment group. Uh, in AWS code deploy in our CloudFormation uh, template. That's going to be used uh, later on to deploy the application uh, within code pipeline. And then we have the code pipeline stack itself. Um, so we're using the code pipeline role. And we're defining stages and actions. And so we have a source stage. And in the source stage, we're saying our provider's code commit. It has an output artifact. So basically, it takes the source assets, everything. Uh, that's in code commit, um, and then uh, uses those source artifacts and stores them securely um, in S3. Then we have some configuration where we have a, the branch and the repository name that we've already created using the stack name. And then we go down to the uh, build stage and build action. And here we're using um, AWS code build. You can see that as the provider. We're taking in the input artifacts from the previous stage, which is the source stage, and then we're building it, and then the output artifacts are now st also stored in S3, and that's used in the next, uh, in the next action or next stage. And so, in our configuration, this is a key um, item here that we have a project name, or we have a reference to that code build project that we defined um, earlier. And then, last, we have a deploy um, stage, and then we have a, uh, a demo fleet action, and um, we're using our provider is code deploy. So again, we're taking an input artifact, artifacts from the previous action, and it happens to be the previous stage, which is the build uh, stage in action. And then we're using that um, to deploy the application. No output artifacts because it just deploys the application. Um, but we're taking in the application name and deployment group name, which we defined previously. As I mentioned, it was basically sort of an empty deployment that we then use to build um, the build artifacts that we created in the upstream build process to deploy the application. Okay, so we go back to the CloudFormation console. We can see that our stack has successfully created uh, along with the nested stack as well. And so we select the stack and then we go to outputs and then we find the uh, code pipeline URL. We'll click on that and we can see um, and this is described in the in the blog post is that it uh, there's a failure. And the reason there's a failure uh, is because um, there's, there's nothing in, there's no master branch, there's nothing in the repo. Uh, and, and that's the reason that happened um, is because uh, we created an empty code commit repository. So we have to get some files in there. And so the way you do that is you can actually use another, one of the outputs, which is the clone URL, uh, SSH. And you'll need to set up SSH locally um, or you'll need to set up code config such that you can 
um, perform a Git clone uh, with the SSH. Um, and that's actually described. There's a link um, in the blog post that describes that process. But for now, we're just going to take this. Uh... Okay, so in Finder, I find my code build stack. I'm going to get the actual source that I've been managing um, in GitHub, and I'm going to put this um, in my local uh, repository. And I'll go back to the command line and type add all files. I need to. So I add all the files and then I commit them. And then I push that up to the code commit repo. Okay, so I can also go to the CloudFormation output and I can click on the code commit uh, URL. And you can see uh, that all the changes have, um, have been committed um, into this code commit repo. And so if I go back to uh, code pipeline, um, it's, it's always pulling a code commit or about once a minute or so. It's going to be uh, pulling the, the source repository, in this case, that, uh, that code commit repo. And it's going to find that um, that it exists now. And so now it exists, it gets all the assets and pulls them down, uh, puts them in S3, and uses it as uh, an output artifact that's be, that gets consumed by the build process. So we're going to pause. It takes a... The overall um, run of the stack takes seven minutes, uh, and then this process itself uh, takes, um, uh, you know, on the order of three to four minutes or so to run. Okay, it successfully um, generated the source artifacts, and I can click right on the commit uh, link here, and I can go right to the code commit repo um, right off of code pipeline. You'll be able to do that as it goes through the various actions and stages. You'll be able to do that. Uh, for code build and code deploy as well. Okay, so as it's going through the uh, build action within the build stage, I can click on details, and then I can see the um, the code build process uh, going through its various phases that we saw um, or th that we had uh, talked about before when, we're, when we were manually setting up the uh, code build project. But so now it's uh, create the code build project. And now it's actually executing on that project. And all this is defined um, in co code in CloudFormation. Now it's just executing that. OK, so we can see that it's now gone through all the stages and actions that are de defined in our deployment pipeline. So we can click on uh, Details. And we can select one of these uh, instances. And then we can copy the URL. Then we can see that it launches the uh, the Java um, application on Tomcat, and we can make uh, local changes, uh, update those changes, and um, and commit them commit them to code commit, and then it will run through this process again, just as we would in a commit to deployment uh, lifecycle. Um, so that's the uh, the walkthrough of uh, our second of two posts on AWS Code Build. In this one, we went over uh, the complete automation. Uh, of uh, code build along with code commit um, and uh, code deploy uh, using CloudFormation. So now you can define um, everything in code and then run through all the, the uh, various processes uh, that you define as a part of your deployment pipeline so you can release software to users uh, whenever there's a business reason to do so. So I'm Paul Duvall with Stelligent and definitely stay tuned for more from us. Um, on these uh, code services and AWS and, um, and DevOps continuous delivery and so on. Thanks a lot.